This is on. Are we recording? Yes, yes I think so. Okay, then. so let's start again. I will uh, just uh, make a little recap uh, with some complement of what we done before. And uh, we were, uh, we finished with a proof, which was about uh, computation of the limit of the expectation of the normalized trace of a product of Wigner matrices. And I introduced some graph notations that I will recall here. I recall a test graph and that's to be think as a test function, but it, it's a graph. T, V, E, and uh, labeling L function. So it's a finite, let's say, connected graph for the moment. And L is a labeling function. Example, we were considering such a graph, a simple cycles, simple cycle with uh, edges labeled L1, L2, up to Ln, right? Then if I denote for Xn, a family of matrices, uh, we were considering uh, X1, X2, LL, we denote to N of T applied in matrices, so this is just a notation of a functional, applied to this test graph in these matrices, we call it the trace of a test graph. It is the expectation of one over n, the sum over the labeling map from the vertex set of t to the set of indices from one to n of the product. So we choose for each vertex here some integers. Given this collection, for each age, we have a label, so we can associate the matrix XL. And because we have, uh, we have specified uh, entries, uh, indices, we can consider the entries. So we do the product over these entries. This is what I'm writing right now. We do the product over all the edges that I denote VW in the edge set of uh, T of the matrix associated to this edge that I called L of E. This is my labeling map, which is tell me this is L1, L2, to Ln. If there is some adjoint, I will be, uh, I will have some labeling, but let's forget about this. And the entry that correspond to this choice, you can check this is uh, phi of W, phi of V. So this is just a complicated, a complicated notation that can be specified in what we consider with this graph. So let me uh, stay in this uh, place. This to n of t in xn, is just what we were considering before. One over n, the trace of the product, xl1, xln. This is just a consequence of this definition if you specify it. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Of matrices of size n by n. Okay. Any matrices, and we specify independent Wigner matrices later, but just a general definition. And then, we, I convince you that we have a, a formula. So we were specifying in specific case, but actually this is true in general, that when you compute uh, such a trace, you have a summation over indices and you can organize your summation depending on which indices have the same value on uh, some vertices, okay? And if you look at this formula, having the same value, can be integrated in the quotient graph in the following way. So we have a sum over the partition of vertices. 
And then we have this sum where we restrict the indices to be equal according to this rule. And it can be written uh, in the following as a new functional. I call it tau zero. It is applied on the quotient graph T pi. I remind it is obtained by identifying vertices in the same block of the partition. And tau n zero is similar to tau n. It is the same definition, but I assume that phi is injective. But with phi, so here we apply in the graph T pi. So it starts from the vertex set of this graph, which is the V pi to n is injective. You can check that assuming phi injective and doing this uh, sum over the partition ensure that we are exactly organizing the indices depending on uh, where they are equal or not. Okay, so this was specified in the case of a simple cycle, but actually, if you start with an arbitrary graph, this is always true. Okay, so now we start again considering that. Xn are independent Wigner matrices, assuming the variance is one and outside the diagonal. We proved that uh, we proved that this injective trace, which was the term inside this uh, sum over partition, I just gave him a name for it today. It converges either to zero or one. Converge to one if the Cushion graph T pi is a double tree. And zero is all right. What is a double tree? So it's a quotient graph, which becomes a tree if I forget the multiplicity, the multiplicity of uh, the ages, and the multiplicity is two. Okay, okay. So if it is clear, let me give some comments. Uh, I presented uh, the notion of non-commutative distribution. No, I, I don't understand. You said if you forget the multiplicity and the multiplicity is two, what do you mean? So. so here, if I forget the multiplicity, I get a tree. Oh, wait. I forget the. If I forget the multiplicity, I get a tree. Yes. And the multiplicity is two for each group of ages. Okay. Is it uh, clear? Okay. That's the double tree. Okay. This is what I call the double tree. It's not a tree because I have loops here, but they are just trivial loops uh, because I have double ages. Okay. Okay. I will comment how we can compute that. Just. Uh, so just, I say that the uh, non-commutative distribution generalizes the classical notion of distribution if we look at moments. Classical theory, we have moments. Non-commutative probability, we have non-commutative moments. For the traffic theory, we have this graph moments, which plays the role of the moments. Knowing the data of this quantity for each test graph, is by definition knowing the traffic distribution of Xn. We can speak about that to motivate that it is a generalization, which is quite natural. And this tau zero is actually a transform of tau, which, is, which I like to see as a wavelet transform because it is not exactly the Fourier transform. It is between the frequential representation and the spatial representation in some heuristic. And it is a very sparse representation. It is either zero or something very simple. OK, but we will play a lot with this injective trace because it's a nice object. We have a nice description. And we, if we understand well the, 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 the injective transform, we will be able to understand this guy, which is the quantity of interest. OK, but first, let's see some application of that. Of that formula. Alors, non, 
consequence, for these matrix models, the limit of the expectation of uh, the normalized trace, so I denote it uh, before phi n, the expectation of the normalized trace of a product of matrices converge to some quantity for each n and each L1 L quantity that I denote phi of x L1 x Ln, and these guys are non-commutative random variable, if you want, or just a notation. But you can say they live in an algebra, and we have a linear form, which is the non-commutative expectation. Now let's play about this guy, because it's a limiting distribution. So first, I want to make a parallel with the Gaussian random variables. So we have this formula, which can be seen as a consequence of uh, this. Yes? Why is that a consequence of what you said before, that this limit? This limit exists? Yes. So this, we agree, is the expectation of uh, 1 over n's uh, trace, yes. right? OK. Which is nothing else than this. Ah, yes. And this, we decompose it as a finite ah, sum yes, and yes. prove that each sum on converge, right? OK, OK. But yes. that's uh, good to. Okay, so uh, a fact which is classical in free probability and, then, and can be seen in different ways, we will be seen thanks to this formula, is the following. For all M, a monomial, for each uh, of these index, so for each uh, Wigner matrix, if you want, and we are considering its limit, if we consider the limit of the expectation of the normalized trace of the Wigner matrix X L times the monomial, so this is just the limit that we consider for matrices, we have this formula. This is a sum over all decomposition of my monomial as a left monomial time X L time right monomial of the limit of the expectation of the normalized trace of the left monomial time the limit of the expectation of the normalized trace of the right polynomial. So this is a formula that we will see is can be seen as a consequence of this. We will play a little bit with this combinatorics representation. And Later, we'll do the parallel with the Gaussian variable. So first, let's see why this is a consequence of this. So does everyone understand what I mean with this decomposition? Let me give you an example. Maybe if I take, uh, let, let's call x and y instead of uh, xl1, xl2, two variables like this. So if I have a monomial, which is uh, x, y, x square y, and I want to look at the decomposition as a left and right uh, monomial that sandwich x, which decomposition I will have. I can write that m is one time x time this monomial y x square y. I can also write this is x y time x time x square y, or I can write it, considering the last uh, letter here, x y x times x times y. So in each case, I have a left monomial, a right monomial, and they sandwich my variable. So if I want to write this sum, I will have three terms. So by LR, you always mean L times R equals Equal m also. Hello. So, so these two monomials. So I have a left monomial. I have a right monomial. On each line, I have the equality that m is the left times x times the right. Is it what you? Okay. 
you look at all the way you can decompose it as such a product of three terms. And here I give the three decomposition that we're going to consider here. Okay. When you have a square, it's x times x. And so there are two instances of x that can be considered differently. So you first, so in the second term, I consider this in first position, but I must also consider it in the second uh, position. Okay. Okay, so why this formula is a consequence of that? When you consider phi of x time a monomial, you know, thanks to the graph notation, that you can write it as the tau of a first edge labeled x. And we have a cycle where we have some unknown variables such that the product is m. You're still looking at this, so maybe you need a, or maybe is a proof will illustrate a little bit what we have. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yes. Short time. Uh-huh. Yeah, and this is just a symbol for the limit of the matrix. When I write this, it's just think it as a, a definition of this, uh, a definition which is just formal. But if you want, you just construct a non commutative probability space, and this is a nice space. No, the sure. limit is on the left, no? Huh? The limit is on the left. Right, well, the limit is on the left. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so let's see why this formula is true. What we know is that when we compute that, we can uh, just do the summation over the partition pi such that if I not uh, t as usual, this test graph, uh, this guy should be the indicator than the question graph is a double tree. Right? This is this formula. And this is the indicator function representing this. Okay? So now, if it is a double tree, this means that this edge must be associated to another edge. And this is my sum here, because it must be associated to an edge with the same label. Okay? Doing so, if I fix first. I don't know which partition I'm considering, but first I do the summation over the decomposition of my monomial X is L and Y. And this means that I choose which age labeled X is associated to this guy. So now I have the uh, sum over the quotient of Pi such that we have this connection. We have the orange connection, just a shortcut to sum what I say, of the indicator, then T pi is a double two. I just intercalate uh, conditions that appear before. So now, if you know that you have a double tree here, X, Y, you know that your you, have, you are a quotient of this cycle. This means that here, you have a cycle which corresponds to the L monomial. Here you have a cycle which corresponds to the R monomial. And you must identify vertices of this graph in such a way you get a double tree. I claim that you cannot identify a vertex of this guy with the vertex of this guy. This is a double tree structure. And you should be convinced about this without a proof and writing a proof is different. And so, uh, making a double tree with some uh, identification of vertices, there are only one way to do that is independently of what appears here is making a double tree here and independently of that, making a double tree here. Okay? This results in a factorization formula, which means that this is the sum over 
m equals LXR of choosing this pi here. Let's say we have a pi one and a pi two. Pi one, which will be a partition of uh, the vertex set of this L uh, subgraph and the sum over the partition of the vertex set of the subgraph represented by the cycle of R. And this sum is, uh, this is two independent sums. And now the indicator that uh, T pi is a double tree is exactly the indicator that this subgraph is double tree and this subgraph is a double tree. So it's how we can handle this combinatoric representation to prove such formula. This is uh, what we are known, the sum over uh, this decomposition. But sum over pi one of being a double tree is just, uh, let's say, T L. Oh, wait, no, this is T. Oh. T pi L, so the subgraph here, and T R pi one and pi two are double trees. Okay, and so this, if you regroup these two sums, you find that this is a formula you proved before, and you get phi of L times phi of L. I'm going a bit fast, but I'm just trying to convince you that we can just use this kind of reasoning to get real absolute formula, right? Okay. Yes? Alors, I'm just saying that because I have a double tree, uh, the first, what I call the first uh, age is this one, which uh, corresponds to this one. So if M is a, a complicated monomial, you have XL1, XL2, which depends on this one. First age, because we have a double tree, is associated to a unique uh, age that I let me call it uh, just x tilde for uh, just uh, for the way x tilde. Okay, so maybe I should no. It's labeled a. So let's say this is the age e. This is the age e tilde. Both of them have the same label, and this is what I should say. E tilde. Okay. And I'm just saying that fixing this age, and we know that all choices are possible, so I will have a sum. This is just a sum over the uh, E tilde age of the M part. And just I represent it choosing uh, an age like this is just choosing one uh, of these decomposition. So of course, there's a lot of uh, information like this. So I'm just trying to, to give you the idea of the computation we do. Yes? We avoid counting the number of double trees, but if you count them, you will find the Catalan number when you have a single uh, matrix. But here you have, you have several matrices. Yeah, uh, yes, but maybe I, I did not focus about that. I should have mentioned it. Uh, so that, twi uh, so I call twin age of a double tree, two age that form uh, an age of multiplicity two. And I forget to mention it that if uh, I have a XL1 and XL2, but L1 is different from L2, in the weight that was appearing in the formula, this result in uh, having a weight zero because we consider the expectation of one entry of the associated matrix times uh, another, the same entry of another matrix. And this is non zero, only if the matrices are the same. Otherwise, they're, same, yeah, they're independent. So, is a double tree such that twin ages have same label? So, I apologize for this. Uh, 
things that I forget because it, it clarifies a little bit the fact that uh, this variable must be the same as this one. Is it more clear? Okay, so let me just do the parallel with Gaussian variable, and then we will stop here. So I will use different letters just to avoid confusion. I consider Y a family of classical uh, Gaussian random variable, independent, independent Gaussian random variables. So you know that you can use the integration by part, which tells you that if you take the expectation of one of the YL times a function of uh, this family, and this function uh, can, is derivative with bounded derivative, then this guy is the expectation of the derivative with respect to the else uh, variable of f of this. This is just integration by part for Gaussian random variable. Now, if you specify a monomial with respect to one variable is exactly doing this summation. Think about it when you differentiate a monomial. Here it's a commutative monomial, but you can, we can always order the letters and consider it like this. So the expectation of y of L times a monomial in this family will be the sum over the decomposition of my monomial in the left monomials times x uh, y l times right monomial. And if you look at this expectation of the derivative, it will give you the expectation of the product of l and r. And here we can see the difference. We have something which is similar if you think that uh, this phi is an expectation. We have the same decomposition, which is a, a non-commutative derivative here. This is the name of this thing. But you see that here, this expectation takes the product of the object, and here we have the product of expectation. So this is just a slight formal difference. But somehow, having such a formula in both cases, just make a parallel between these two variables. This guy, you know, it is a Gaussian variable. It is a central variable for classical probability, for instance, in the, in the central limit theorem. This guy is the analog in the non-commutative probability space. And there is a central limit theorem for free variables. If you take a sum of free variable and as they are centered, you normalize it as in the central limit theorem. The limit is a semicircular distribution. Okay, so this is the end of uh, this morning session. We will uh, resume this afternoon. If you have any question, we have time for that. Thank you. Hi, sorry, I had just one question and maybe a follow up uh, on the last line on the on the left is tau n zero. So is the is the arrow meaning that it is a limit n to infinity, right? Absolutely. Okay, so the, the follow up thing is, I am familiar with another example where you have some object that in the limit n to infinity goes to, a, let's say, trivial limit, either one or, or zero which is in the context of extreme value statistics when, like, for example, when you study the distribution of the maximum of IAD random variables and you have the limit that is either zero or one, unless you scale appropriately the some parameter inside the function. So I was thinking if you could get like a crossover function between zero and one, if you, if you have a param, if you add a parameter in the game, which which essentially um, computes or, or quantifies how much your network is not a double tree, how far it is from a double tree. Because if you get a double tree and you, for example, add just one edge, uh, it is technically no longer a double tree. And uh -huh. so you would immediately drop to, to zero, but clearly this object is more close, is, is closer to a double tree than any random 
network that you can that you can imagine. So I'm thinking that there might be a, cro a non-trivial cro crossover function between zero and one if you add like a parameter in the game that quantifies. So for another matrix model, you mean? Huh? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. or, or uh, that that should quantify in some sense how far you are from 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 a double tree. What 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 is the level of violation that uh, the, the amount of violations that you have in your uh, in your game? But I apologize for the chaotic nature of, of the no, question. No, no, no. I have uh, not really idea how to answer this question. Uh -huh. It's a bit. Uh... Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, if you take an arbitrary matrix, you will say you 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 want to to identify what happened when it's not a double tree and have an interpretation about this. No, I I mean I could present you different matrix model for which we will be different matrices with different limits, where you will see nice shapes like uh, trees with arbitrary uh, uh, tree-like graphs with arbitrary multiplicity, or cacti. Like uh, this is a cactus. So I can present you, uh, compare you, give you uh, some models and some uh, variety of these graphs, but I'm not sure that it will, uh, it will really answer your question in that direction. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, we can discuss. Uh, well, we can discuss things. that during the mention. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So See you the first we time start then. again at 2 p.m. Is there any questions in the chat? Ah, très bien. Let's see. Ah oui, Schwinger, this is Schwinger Dyson equation. Alors, let me see. Moi, j'ai commencé à 11 heures. Ah oui, bonne question. Excellent, the family of Wigner matrices. Là, je me suis permis de répondre. Non, il y a. Enfin, il y a fini. Merci. Why is XL not mentioned in summand of the lemma? Ah, ben, Stéphane a répondu. L is a word in the XL. Oui, oui, oui. Exactly. Can you rephrase this? <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly a Schwinger Dyson equation. In M, cancel some O. Ah oui, c'est un peu dur. Hein. Attends, je devrais euh, arrêter. J'arrête ou je mets en pause le. Arrête. 